offer assurance of the safety of AstraZeneca vaccines in the community. Government of India's donation launches COVID-19 vaccination programs in more CARICOM countries. And the public-private sector partnership receives over $1 million EC dollars for vaccine procurement in Antigua and Barbuda. Welcome to this week's episode of the CARICOM News Time. I'm Tusanki English Francis. Thank you for joining us. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, says the AstraZeneca vaccine in the community is not the same version or batch as in Europe. The agency gave that assurance in response to the suspension of AstraZeneca vaccination campaigns in some European Union countries following reports that the vaccine increased the risk of blood clots. CARFA said the WHO's Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety systematically reviews any vaccine safety signals and concerns, including those related to COVID-19 vaccines. As soon as WHO has gained a full understanding of these events and the findings and any changes to current recommendations will be immediately communicated to regional and international public health partners, CARFA stated. And it said persons who experience any adverse reactions after receiving vaccines should report to local authorities for them to do the necessary investigation. CARFA also reiterated what the WHO said recently, that vaccination against COVID-19 will not reduce deaths from other causes. Meanwhile, the European Medicines Agency, EMA, said on March the 11th that there is currently no indication that Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is linked to an increased risk of blood clots. It said the vaccine can continue to be administered while investigation of cases of the vein thrombosis continue. Several CARICOM member states have indicated that they will be moving forward with administering the AstraZeneca vaccine deemed effective by the World Health Organization and which has received the Caribbean regulatory system approval. We remain committed to the vaccine and the efficacy of the vaccine as stated or outlined by the experts at the WHO and even more recently this morning by Professor Peter Figueroa who is part of that expert panel by AstraZeneca UK that has sent out communique and the WHO's position remains and you know the vaccine has been administered to millions of persons so far around the world and we have not had incidents that could change that expert view that it is an effective and safe vaccine and we will track the persons here in Jamaica that receive the vaccine as we have done to show the actual impact and so far so good. The government of India continues to play a pivotal role in CARICOM's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. After donating COVID-19 vaccines to Barbados and Dominica in February, India's recent gifts of AstraZeneca COVID she vaccines to Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Belize, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Suriname account for more than 490,000 vaccines in the community. We have our first tranche of vaccines, 50,000 doses, thanks to the selflessness, thanks to the kindness, thoughtfulness of the people of India. And I, again, wish to thank uh, my good friend, Prime Minister Modi, um, for his consideration of Jamaica as one of the countries that should benefit from the vaccines. Through India's contributions, CARICOM member states are rolling out their vaccination programs and are seeing strong turnouts among the targeted groups, including frontline workers, the elderly, persons with disabilities, and workers in the tourism industry. Authorities in Jamaica were deeply appreciative of India's donation of 50,000 COVID-19 vaccines, which enabled the start of vaccinations in the country that has seen rising infections. 
Health Minister, the Honorable Christopher Tufton, has expressed deep concern about the country's COVID-19 positivity rate, which he said is over 35% of all PCR and public sector antigen tests. We are still very concerned, as you have expressed, with the increasing positivity rate, with March 7th representing our highest daily case count on record for the country. But more importantly, the positivity rate of well over 30 percent. Just to clarify that the numbers uh, tells one story and the public I know gets alarmed when they see high numbers. But the positivity rate is really the key variable to watch because what that says to us is for every amount that we test, whether it is 100 or 300, the higher the percentage of positivity is the more the virus is present within our population. And so a positivity rate of over 30% in this instance, I believe closer to 35%, 39% means that for every 10 person in the population, four are positive. Now that is a graphic depiction of the extent of the virus in our population. Public health nurse Marcia Thomas Yetman was the first person in Jamaica to receive the coronavirus vaccine at the Good Samaritans Inn in Kingston on Wednesday, the 10th of March, exactly one year after the first case of the virus was confirmed in the island. The government of Jamaica targeted the vaccination of over 17,000 healthcare workers at the end of the first week followed by the Jamaica Defense Force and the Jamaica Constabulary Force in the second week. Over in the Bahamas, listeners Prime Minister Hubert Minnis described his feelings after the arrival of the India-donated COVID-19 vaccine at the Linden Pinglin International Airport. The most delightful and joyous day of my life, because now we can see truly light at the end of the tunnel where we can overcome this pandemic and get back to normal life, of which I know you are all waiting for. The distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine in the Bahamas began on the 17th of March on the islands of New Providence and the Grand Bahama. We have been seeing the private sector supporting government's efforts to advance national vaccination programs. In Antigua and Barbuda, a public-private partnership for vaccinations received more than easy $1.5 million for the acquisition of COVID-19 vaccines for the population. The government expressed its thanks for the contribution to the Treasury of Antigua and Barbuda to ease the burden on government at a time when it said revenues are at an all-time low. After recording a COVID-19 positivity rate of less than 5% of all PCR and public sector antigen tests, some elements of Barbados' commercial and retail sectors have reopened. In an address to the nation on the 11th of March, Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Motley, announced measures for reopening as of March 15th. They include new curfew hours from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. We're taking chances for the commercial sector, the retail sector, to open back up. It means that hairdressers and barbers and estheticians, subject to the protocols that have been agreed before, can open back up. It means that restaurants will be allowed to open back up within the time frames for the curfew that we've established, but with one exception, that there will be no in-house dining for fast food restaurants, but all other restaurants can have the in-house dining based on the density and protocols that were previously agreed on with the COVID monitoring unit. With respect to the transport sector, clearly if we are allowing Bajans to go back to work, then clearly we're going to have to move from the 60% restriction. Um, at this stage, the public health officials still want a cap at 75%. What does that mean? That the bus will take the capacity for three quarters, and of course, with masks being mandatory um, in public places, we will expect all persons on public transport 
to keep their mask on. Restrictions remain on wedding receptions, gyms, pleasure crafts, nightclubs, cinemas, and theaters. Sporting activities such as cricket, football, and volleyball will remain on pause for another few weeks, but non-team and non-combative sports, including road tennis, lawn tennis, diving, golf, walking, and hiking are permitted. We close the program this week with pride in the achievement of Grenadian Bevon Chadel Charles. Bevon is the Caribbean winner of this year's Commonwealth Youth Award with her creation of climate smart farms across the Caribbean. Bevon got a nod from among three other Caribbean finalists. The winners were announced at a virtual ceremony the Commonwealth held on the 10th of March. My name is Bevon Chadel Charles and I'm from Grenada. I own Akata Farms. It is a self-sustainable farm here in Grenada. We have a substantial amount of imports coming into our country that can be manufactured here. So one of our missions for Akata Farm is to reduce our national import at the same time to create sustainable farms around the island and throughout the Caribbean region. One of the things that I want to do is to create a platform that youths can express their knowledge. So it could be a podcast, it can be a forum that we could have weekly. The issues concerning agricultural development in Grenada. I am delighted to announce that the Commonwealth Youth Awards 2021 regional winner for the Caribbean is Bevon Shadel Charles. First of all, I would like to thank the Commonwealth organization, the panel for this award. I would like to thank my parents for their support, my family for their support, to the team at Akata Farms for their dedicated work towards building sustainable agriculture system in Grenada and the Caribbean region. It is an honor and a privilege to accept this award to be selected among brilliant youth advocates across the Commonwealth region. For these and other stories, you can visit the CARICOM news site at today.caricom.org or the CARICOM website at caricom.org. Like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Be safe and see you next time.